We're, we're following local breaking news on your fast track today. Top of the hour investigators are looking for the cause of the fire that forced an evacuation of an apartment complex in North Moorhead. Crews from both Moorhead and Doworth got called just after 11 last night and they were on the scene for several hours in the 2400 block of the 4th Avenue North. That's just north of the Buffalo Wild Wings. Fire officials say that fire was isolated to a single apartment unit on the third floor. The battalion chief says they were able to get that situation under control within about 10 minutes. We actually didn't encounter any visible fire from the outside. It was all heavy smoke, uh, just a lot of heat in there. No injuries are reported, but many people who are forced out of their homes while firefighters worked kept warm in their cars in the parking lot. Life as we know it comes to a halt when big storms hit, and you can see it at truck stops and travel centers all over North Dakota this morning. Dozens of semis are stuck because highways are shut down. There are rows of big rigs just off I-94 in Jamestown waiting to get back on the road. Most of the truckers are heading to Canada, others to the west, and truckers may have to sit just tight just a little bit longer. Roads they typically don't open until the wind dies down and plows have had time to take down the drifts. And we have a lot we need to go over on those road conditions for you this morning. The whole state of North Dakota is now being impacted one way or another because of this nasty weather we have. Let's start with no travel advised. That is the majority of the state. All along our Canadian border here, except for Walsh County is not in it, all across Montana and then South Dakota, going back up by that Logan McIntosh and Lamore Dickey County line. And then on over Barnes County, now included this morning in no travel advised, up around the Devil's Lake Basin as well. Everything we got shaded in red here. This is a solid three quarters of the state right now this morning that is in a no travel advisory. Now the other thing that we're dealing with literally the rest of the entire state is dealing with a travel alert this morning. That's Walsh County all the way down along the Red River Valley to South Dakota over to Dickey and Lamore. Like I said that line there Everything else in here that we're shading in purple, including Cass County, a lot of drivers there, is in a travel alert this morning. So you need to be careful. They're saying that those conditions can, can have reduced visibility, can have that wind and blowing snow. I-94 is shut down. Jamestown all the way west to Montana. I-29 this morning is open right now. However, we're showing that it is uh, partially to fully covered with some snow on there. Ice even reported around that West Fargo area. No travel advised on I-94 around that Valley City area. So even though it's not closed there, they're saying you still shouldn't go on it this morning, so you need to be careful. Minnesota really not seeing as much of an impact this morning. I just want to show you that map, though, so our folks in Minnesota can see what they're up against when they head out the door this morning. Far, far northwestern Minnesota, War Road, Rozo, they're dealing with some partially covered roads. However, the rest of it, Detroit Lakes, Monoman, Fergus Falls, Battle Lake, we're talking uh, green on there. So make sure you stay with us here throughout the morning and on the VNL News and Weather apps to keep updated. Leading our team coverage of this storm is meteorologist Lisa Green. We want to check in with her right now for what you're up against when you head out the door. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. I have a feeling those roads are going to start to look a little different here as we go through the day today in Minnesota as well. So be prepared. It may be okay right now, but as you're heading home from work and school, you may be running into some issues. We've got a winter weather advisory that's been issued this morning for for most of the Red River Valley here because of the additional snowfall or the first snows we're seeing with this round and the wind that's going to be picking up with it. We're still in a blizzard warning for much of central and eastern or western North Dakota rather. Devil's Lake being split by that blizzard warning at the moment. Here's a look outside. This is in Fargo, south end of town. You can see all the vehicles in the lot at Luther Family Ford covered in snow. You're going to need some time to get that cleared off your vehicle if you park outside in the metro and other places in the valley that we've had snow and snow on the ground too. So you're going to be running into that as Jordan was showing you. Here's a look at our temperatures. We're cold enough for this to stick and to stay around if not treated or on those lesser traveled roads. We're looking at 27 degrees in Fargo. Grand Forks is at 26, a break in the action from the snow right now. Uh, but we've got more scattered snow showers to come as this low continues to hang around the valley for now. Eventually it starts moving eastward today and we'll have all of those scattered bands of snow rotating around that low moving through. 
The general movement of the entire system is moving east, but these bands, again, still rotating around. So if you're in the east, you're going to start to see those snow showers pick up. We're seeing more of that blue showing up into Lakes Country up to that Highway 2 corridor in Minnesota. A larger area of snow uh, between Fargo and Mayville. A couple of bands north of Grand Forks that may be swinging through later this morning. And a couple of pockets of heavier snow down along the South Dakota line. You see these deep blues here? There's a lot of wind with it, too, so snow squall potential there. Up to the north, we've got Fargo in a relative lull. There's still some flakes here, but more to the northwest, so be prepared for more of that snow to swing through. The wind has been lighter, starting to see it pick up in Fergus Falls, a 20 mile per hour gust. Sisseton down to the south, 45 and 33 in Oaks. This is all, again, going to be working its way eastward. We've got a gust to 33 in Devil's Lake. Visibility there is low. We're at a quarter mile visibility up in the Devil's Lake Basin in Langdon, and we'll see those visibilities drop as the day goes on because of that snow and wind combination. If you have school today, we've got a lot of announcements at the bottom of your screen there. If you have school and you're heading out to the bus stop, be ready for snow. Have those snow boots on. And then this afternoon, if you're not seeing snow this morning, you may see it in the afternoon hours at the bus stop and be ready for blowing snow. Additional snowfall, one to three inches for a lot of us, some of us a little bit more than that. Another first alert weather day today. Be prepared for wind and snow Friday. It starts to exit. We get some relief from this event, so uh, we just have to hang in there today. Maybe the worst day of it for some of us on this first alert weather day. A lot to go over this morning, Lisa. Thank you for keeping us updated. Those snow plows and snow blowers are out in full force across most of North Dakota this morning as people struggle to get out from under what has been this week's blizzard. That was a major one in the state. Well, these crews are working up in Devil's Lake, and that's where the Valley Today's JC Don is holding up. Not sure. If you could even move, we want to go ahead and send it right out to you. Good morning, JC. Hey Phoenix, yes, I'm still here in Devil's Lake and right now at this hour, the biggest battle today is that blowing snow that Lisa was just talking about. This wind has really picked up over just the past half hour and you can see lots of drifting snow. This is a secondary road just off of Highway 2, almost completely snow covered. There has not been a plow through here um, yet this morning. You can see there's a lot of cleanup still here to do. While we don't have any falling snow, that wind, that wind has picked up and I'll tell you, it is a lot more bitter than it was the past two days. It is a really biting cold wind. This is a look at Highway 2. You can see once that wind picks up, that cold wind, it um, is heading east and it's causing some blowing snow, some drifting snow onto this Highway 2. Um, highway 2 still closed from Devil's Lake to Wilson as of this hour, um, but this is what we're looking at. We don't have any snowfall right now, but just a very cold, windy start to the morning here in Devil's Lake. No travel is advised there. Yeah, pretty nasty conditions still. JC Dodd reporting live day two out in Devil's Lake. Thank you this morning. Time now is 656. People in small town Minnesota town are in shock after being slammed by an EF2 tornado. With winds, they're up to 135 miles per hour. Nearly every building in Teope uh, were hit overnight Tuesday into Wednesday. Homes are flattened and cars are overturned there. Deputies and firefighters from two different departments went door to door to evacuate the people who live there because of a natural gas leak. Most of that town is still without power as people work to clean up. We are getting our first look at some video showing an officer involved shooting in Monoman County. We do want to warn you, though, it might be difficult for some viewers to watch, even knowing that the person who was shot did survive. The Monoman County Sheriff's Office says a deputy was helping with a traffic stop that turned into a chase and then a crash. That's when the deputy saw 20 year old Shakoya Basswood had a gun. He told her to drop it, but she then pointed it at him. The deputy fired, hit Basewood, then gives her medical attention. Basewood had warrants out for her arrest at the time and is now being charged with attempted murder and assault. The Monomen County Sheriff's Office said they are releasing this video because there is a narrative on social media that the deputy was trying to kill the woman. Authorities are also asking for help finding the person who used a high-powered rifle to shoot a horse near Barnesville. The Clay County Sheriff's Office says it happened Sunday night near the Clay Wilkin County line. The owner found a bullet hole in this horse's hip. Anyone with information about that shooting is urged to call police. New details are now emerging about a shooting that happened in Pelican Rapids that turned into a two day manhunt. Court records now show the victim told police that the suspect pushed his way into her house on Monday and then punched her in the face and the head. She says the next thing she remembers is pain in her legs and stomach. 
Authorities say a witness heard several gunshots and then saw the victim being shot. 36 year old Fu Futhasa Prothane is facing several charges, including attempted murder. He was also arrested in the southern Minnesota after a two day search. Morehead police have taken a bite of the local drug business. A traffic stop yesterday turned into a seizure of $20,000 worth of meth, fentanyl, and marijuana after a canine sniffed out the drugs. They say 40 year old David Keene Jr. and 25 year old Samantha Riggles are now booked in the Clay County Jail on charges of a controlled substance distribution. Police made that traffic stop after getting a tip that alleged Keene and Riggles were making frequent trips to Minneapolis to pick up their drug shipments. A Fargo teacher is out $15 thousand dollars after falling victim to a pop up computer scam. She says she received an alert on her computer last week saying her personal information and money were compromised in a ransomware attack and that she needed to act quickly to fix it. But it was all a scam and she lost her money. Olson hopes that her story is going to help others on their toes keep the keep on their toes about with stuff like this. The Today Show and CBS Mornings are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. More live up to the minute news and weather coming up on the Fargo CW. That's where we find Lisa Grain as she continues to track the weather system causing this in the metro. A travel alert for Cass County. Be careful out there. Have a safe day. We'll see you tomorrow.